We all know that young gorillas and humans are called babies. But did you know that a young goat is a kid? A cheetah is a cub? An elephant is a calf? And a kangaroo is a joy? Mammals are born fully formed like the whale. The tortoise has to work hard to break into the world. And the koala grows up in its mother's pouch. Hi, I'm Jack Hanna. Join me on Zoo Life to learn more about the animals of the world. Baby animals are at the heart of any zoo. Here at the Bush Gardens Animal Nursery, they get lots of tender, loving care and the most advanced medical attention possible. This is a baby impala, only four days old, and it's native to Africa. You had enough to eat yet? You might think you're on the African plains, but right here in Tampa, Florida, at Bush Gardens, you can enjoy the spectacular sight of wild animals doing what comes naturally. And that includes having babies, lots of them. Throughout the park, the natural mothers usually care for their own offspring. But sometimes, just like with human infants, the baby animals need a little extra help to get a good start in life. Every year, about 300 of them spend some time in the nursery with their surrogate moms. During park hours, the nursery is one of the most popular attractions, but baby care goes on 24 hours a day. Oh, those 3 a.m. feedings. This is Lisa Harris, who's a supervisor of the nursery here at Bush Gardens. Lisa, what's it like to be the mother of birds and antelope and monkeys? You know, it's incredible. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Every day is something different, and we have a special uh, opportunity to watch the babies develop. Now, what I've been watching these little things here. It looks like a chicken. These are blue and gold macaws, and actually... That's a blue and gold macaw? Yes. Can you hold one? One of the questions we get when we have these little babies them. in the window, people cannot believe that these will be the beautiful parrots, those very large parrots that you see. Wow. That this is a here, parrot? Mm -hmm, this one here is only about three or four days old. Awesome. Can we see some more animals? Sure we can. All right. Now, who are these little guys? These are sulfur-crested cockatoos. Oh, yeah. They, they're starting to look like a cockatoo. They sure are. Yeah, I'm going to bring this little buddy out here. Yeah, how, how old is it? This one here is between a month and two months. And you can see that it has many of the wing feathers in. And he has to be able to have his wing feathers in before he can leave the nest. So it's very important that they grow out early so that they're uh, strong and finished. Well, he's got, he's got strong he's talent. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, they have to be able to grip. Mm. It's very important that they're uh, very stable. They're up in the treetops, even though they're yeah, in a they hollow. No tree top. When they get finger. to the edge, they have to be able to hold on. Gosh almighty. <laughs> Now they're getting onto what we call our adult food. Oh yeah, he's eating have, lima bean mm -hmm, vinegar. We have soft vegetables on here. We have Cheerios and also different pellets and seeds for them. Oh, pretty good breakfast, yeah. They have to practice just like our babies. The Bush Gardens Nursery is one of the finest I've ever seen. Each animal gets individualized, round-the-clock attention, has its own feeding schedule and baby formula, and is monitored and weighed daily to make sure it's growing properly. Babies come here for many reasons. A mother might abandon them, but more often it's because they have a medical problem or the mother's unable to care for them. Carissa is a baby owl monkey. Uh, they're native to South America, but Carissa was born right here at Bush Gardens. When she was two months old, her mother died, and so she was brought into the nursery because she had been still getting milk from her mom, so she was, had to learn how to take milk out of a syringe from the nursery people. Uh, since she's gotten a little older, you can see she's eating adult food. In the wild, they would eat insects and leaves and vegetation, also some fruits. And one of her favorites is the green bean because probably it's so colorful and also it's a nice crunchy texture. You know, like when you want to chew on something, you want to crunch it, she likes to crunch that. Hi. Yeah, you good? 
Good boy. Hi, Popeye. Hi, Popeye. This is Popeye. He's a Chilean flamingo. He was injured when he was first hatched in his right eye, and we've had an optometrist come in and, and do some surgery on it. He's a little over three months old. He's just like he's just like a baby, you know. He's just like one of my own kids, where where I'd spend time and, and play with them. We do the same thing with him. Hi, hi, Popeye. For Ruth Barroso, learning flamingo baby language comes with the territory. What you doing? I think he's saying thanks, Mom, for doing a great job. With all that tender, loving care, it won't be long before Papa can be reintroduced into the flamingo colony and eventually have chicks of his own. Babies are not only blessed events, they can ensure the survival of a threatened species. But before you can have babies, you've got to have a good breeding program. Luckily for these endangered Asian elephants, the program here at Bush Gardens is one of the best of any zoo in the world. And a lot of that success is due to Roman Schmidt, who's worked with elephants for over 20 years. Now, Roman, how do you breed an elephant? How do you breed an elephant? Well, it's, that's, it's complicated. Yeah. Of course, you have to have a bull and then some uh, good-looking females. Roman and his elephants have certainly been doing something right, because in the last five years, they've had seven, whoops, I mean eight, babies. And if you've never met a month-old elephant, believe me, it's quite an experience. I think the winner of any baby animal contest would have to be Benny. He was born. I think the I think the winner. I think the winner of any baby animal contest. I think the winner of any baby contest would have to be. He was born just a month ago. Luckily for him, his mother took care of him, so he didn't have to go to the nursery. Because I may have to go to the hospital. the cutest thing I've ever seen. But he's wild, he's, uh, he's full of curiosity right now. He looks like he doesn't weigh much, but that thing is strong. How much does he weigh? He weighs about 250 pounds right now. He was, uh, he was about 195 to 200 at birth. That's a big baby. Benny, aren't you tired? Tell me the truth now, you've got to be tired here. Hey. Take a long Benny, why don't you sit down and rest a minute? You're getting me tired looking at you. Now, right back here, is that the father? Yeah, that's Papa. <laughs> How, he's, not, he's not allowed to come in here right now? If something happens to the baby, they're very, very protective. Right. And we're afraid maybe the father would be overly protective and inadvertently hurt the right. calf. We don't know. So right. it's best to keep them separated. Even through the fence, they get to see each other. They get to c communicate. So. Now, Roman, the, the baby sometimes looks like it's doing what the mother is. Is she teaching it anything? Well, you notice what she just did is uh, she pushed the baby back, <laughs> tried to push the baby back underneath her legs uh, oh, just I to see. keep her in control. That's security for the, for the babies. That's uh, her security blanket. And uh, uh, mama, that's a good way for mama to keep a close eye out on the baby. So, now, I noticed the mother's, uh, her, her breasts are very large. How much? And there's a lot of milk in there. A lot of milk. There, there are probably four to five gallons of milk in there. But the baby won't drink that much. Right. Baby elephants drink very small amounts in spurts. A lot, a lot of times a day. A lot, many times a day. Yes. You've got to feel real lucky to be able to work with an animal as cute as that every day. Yeah, I'm pretty fortunate. Yeah, I'm doing what uh, exactly what I've wanted to do. Well, I tell you, you've allowed me just 30 minutes, and it's been a 30 minutes I'll never forget. I really That's appreciate great. it. Thank you I very much. I appreciate it. Great. <laughs> he doesn't want me to leave. He wants to go back to Columbus. <laughs> I've got to go. See you later. Yeah. Oh, look at this. He's got to go with me. The name of this island, Oahu, is Hawaiian for coming together. And here in Sea Life Park, things can come together in some very strange ways. Several years ago, a false killer whale here mated with an Atlantic bottlenose dolphin, creating the world's first walfin. They call her Keikai Malo, which in Hawaiian means peaceful sea. Right now, she lives behind the scenes in a maternity tank with her newborn calf and her mother, a dolphin. This particular animal really exhibits characteristics from both parents. Keikai Malo is not as black as a false killer whale. 
but she's considerably darker than a bottlenose dolphin. She has a more of a rostrum or nose than a false killer whale does, but significantly less than a bottlenose does. She has about twice as many teeth as a whale and about half as many teeth as a bottlenose. So she pretty much pulls right down the middle. Her three-month-old calf, fathered by bottlenose dolphin, is one-fourth false killer whale. Dolphins and killer whales generally reach sexual maturity at eight to 10 years, but K. Kaimalo is only six and a half. And being a mother at that young age poses problems. Oftentimes a first baby is not successfully raised. And when you mix in the additional factor of it being an uncommonly young mother, I think it's very much like a human mother. I think she basically is pretty clueless about what's supposed to go on. When this calf was 24 hours old and had not started to nurse successfully, we started to make plans. Eight times a day, from six in the morning to midnight, the staff here lowers the water level and feeds the calf by hand. Now, does this, this tube feeding doesn't hurt her? Doesn't seem to. She's pretty used to it. OK, pumpkin love. It's amazing. The mother has all this milk, but she won't feed the baby. Yeah, she just uh, hasn't figured it out. Ooh, it looks like milk of magnesia. It's really pretty vile, it's actually. Vile. It's vile. It tastes like fish in a chalk mixture. Oh. Now, how long will you have to tube feed the baby? Probably when she's around five months old, we'll start to transition her onto fish and, and complete it when she's about six months old. I just can't get over how calm this wild animal is. Pull it right out. Yeah, way. I crimp it so that we don't get back feet out of the tube. And uh, just pull it out. And then, after this, we always offer her a bottle. I've Let's never... see, let me get her, let me show you the technique here. Why don't you come stand right over here? A bottle fed three babies, my own, but. <laughs> see, what we do is we just, sometimes she's hungry, sometimes she isn't. We just kind of lift up her little mouth. And you see, she brings that little tongue right on up there. I hear a suck it. Yeah, here, you wanna? Oh, listen. She's kind of a little piggy. <laughs> Are you full? full? Yeah. Okay, tip it up a little bit more. Okay, I think she's full. Okay, and then the last part of this procedure is the we reunite them. What we'll do is if you just step my way one giant right. step, and then Shantae will let her go. She'll go we, find the mother, huh? We wait until she's nice there and she calm, goes. and we just let her go. That's something else. A great bounty of life exists in these Pacific waters, and what we're discovering is just how many of these animals are now endangered and need special care. The Humboldt penguin. Um, he's just a little smaller than the other turtles. The green was... sea turtle. And the highly endangered Hawaiian monk seal. <laughs> Only about 1,500 left in the world. Sea Life Park on the island of Oahu, a place of coming together. <laughs> At the North Carolina Zoo, just outside the town of Asheboro, it's a treat to see animals living in their natural habitat. It's also great for the animals because the more comfortable they are, the more the zoo's breeding programs thrive. This must be the biggest birdhouse in the world. Actually, this is the forest aviary exhibit, where over 150 tropical birds intermingle in a completely natural environment. I can tell you one thing, there's plenty of room in here for free flight. One of the first birds you'll notice inside the North Carolina aviary is the African spoonbill. They live in shallow marshes and lagoons and feed by sweeping their bill just like a spoon through the water. They'll put their bill about halfway in the water and they'll swing it back and forth and around the edges of their bill is, is very ultra sensitive. And if anything brushes up against it, they'll just immediately clamp onto it. African spoonbills have another interesting characteristic. Both the females and the males sit on the nest in fact, this little chick was ushered into the world by his father. 
And there's not just one bird or one parent feeding. Both male and the female take part, just like they did with the incubation. North Carolina is only the second zoo in the country to successfully breed the African spoonbill. They've been so successful that the keepers have had to find a way to slow the birds down. The keepers have bought wooden eggs, and we've painted them to look like the spoonbill eggs. Yeah, they're fake egg. eggs. It's a fake egg. And so what we do is we, if we want just one egg to hatch out in a clutch, we'll go up and replace them with the, the dummy eggs and leave the one good egg in there, and then they hatch out just one. It's hard to believe that this is a fake egg. This is a real egg. Right. This only chick will now get all the attention it deserves, ensuring that it will be well cared for and the cycle of life will continue. This is one of three exhibits at the zoo featuring the lowland gorilla. These animals are highly endangered, but the North Carolina Zoo has had great success with its breeding programs. You're about to meet North Carolina's first gorilla baby. This is Kwanzaa. His name means first in Swahili. He's two and a half years old, and he lives in the forest glade exhibit with his mother, Hope, and Carlos, his father. Kwanzaa's personality is awfully uh, rambunctious, playful. To a degree, you could uh, compare it to a toddler. He, he'd just soon be out in the playground than uh, in, uh, in doing something inside. He wants to be out active and, and playing. Kwanzaa's arrival at the zoo has given visitors a chance to see how gorillas grow. Like any toddler, he's still dependent on his mother. But lately, he's been spending more and more time with his dad, learning how to behave like a real gorilla male. The chest beating is a form of vocalization that alarms, uh, alerts the troop to possible imminent danger. When he becomes uh, an adult, it'll be one of his ways to signal to other members that he's in charge or, or what his intentions are. Last year, keepers brought another female, Donna, into the family in the hope that she, too, would breed with Carlos. So far, she's taking her time getting acquainted. She's never been in a situation where she's had a male that's been very interested in her and hopefully wanting to breed her. In the mornings, many times, they'll want to uh, chase her and try to get his hands on her, but she keeps a safe distance from him. But there's one member of the group that Donna isn't afraid of. She and Kwanzaa are getting to be friends, and the keepers hope their friendship will be the bridge that brings Donna into the family. You learn something new every day, and the observations uh, are different each time we come in. You really gain a respect and admiration for, uh, for just what they are to a degree in their place in the world. People talk about the special bond between mother and child that you can find all through the animal world. There's no doubt in my mind that animals feel love. I don't know what it is about babies, not just human babies like this little baby here, or baby giraffe, or baby gazelle, or baby chimpanzees, whatever it is. Maybe it's the innocence of the animals. For whatever reason, one of the most popular places in a zoo is right where the baby animals are. We visited Bush Gardens in Tampa, Florida, and found there was no shortage of baby animals or guests to enjoy them. We didn't waste any time in asking about the newest arrivals on the Serengeti Plains exhibit. And we learned that raising baby giraffes can be a tall order, and more than a handful to say the least. We spoke with zookeeper Chris Allen about these beautiful long-necked creatures. Now, how big is a giraffe when they're born? Uh, they stand about six foot tall. 
and weigh about 150 pounds. Oh. You know, I can't believe that the baby, what, it falls six feet to the ground? Yeah, we don't have a, a doctor out here, you know, to slap them on their tails, so the ground actually wakes them up, gets them breathing, start, you know, they take their first breath that way. So what kind of a mother does a giraffe make? An excellent mother. A lot of the babies, most of the baby giraffes, they stay with the mothers? Yeah, the mother's milk is pretty hard to uh, reproduce, so uh, we put them in the nursery as a last resort. We give them, give them every opportunity to survive yeah. out here. Before you feed them twice a day? Grain Once. in the morning and hay in the afternoon. Yeah. Look at those tongues. <laughs> now, Chris, as far as drinking water, how in the world does the giraffe do that? Well, that's a very difficult task for a giraffe. What they'll do is they'll splay their legs forward. That'll get their breasts down closer to the ground, and then they can drink their water that way. They also graze that way on grass, and uh, that is when they are accessible to uh, predation. A giraffe's legs may appear to be fragile, but they are actually a source of strength. So when a newborn at Bush Gardens was born with legs that were less than powerful, special attention was paid. Unless it's absolutely necessary, animals are rarely hand-raised by humans. And in this case, it was worth it. I heard about this success story when I visited at Bush Gardens Outback Nursery with Ruth Barroso. Something was wrong with Callie's legs. Did she have braces on? Yes, yeah, she did. Uh, it wasn't really that there was something wrong with her legs. She was just too weak to stand. She was born a little prematurely. If we wanted to get her up or down, it took three of us to, to move her, and we'd have to hold her up and then walk her around the nursery. In the Shriners Hospital, they made braces for us to make our job a little bit easier. And what they did was help to keep her legs from hyperextending backwards but they also helped to make her legs stronger so that it would make our job easier as far as walking her around the nursery and building up her strength. Okay. All right, there. There. One of the greatest pleasures in life is watching a child do what it does best, frolic around, enjoying herself by running free. that animal's legs are doing well. There seems to be no problem with them at all. No problems as far as I could see. The only problem was getting Callie to slow down for a bottle feeding. Unfortunately for me, Callie liked my hair a lot more than the bottle. Jack, you're real lucky. We call that giraffe moose, and there's not very many people that get to experience that. Oh, this is giraffe moose? Yeah. Oh, very funny, Kelly. Thanks so much for taking care of me today. <laughs> Anytime you need a hairdresser, just call Callie. Thank you so much, Kelly. I'm sorry, I've got to go right now. I know my appointment's only half an hour long. Excuse me. Chicago, my kind of town. Children of the city have got to be one of the most riveting sights to see, especially at Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago. Debbie, there looks like there's a lot of excitement here in the barn today. What, what's just happened? Well, about 10, 15 minutes ago, Missy, who's one of our goats, just gave birth to twins, and uh, that's always an exciting part here at the zoo. She, th so these are just born, both of them? Mm -hmm. A male and a female. Wow. And right now what she's doing is clearing off the afterbirth. Lick the babies clean? Mm -hmm. Does a couple of things. One, actually her licking helps dry them off so that they don't get cold. And also the licking stimulates them, like, you know, our babies might get slapped yeah. or something. It helps stimulate their breathing. This was the first one that was born. Yeah, We're still yeah. working on the second one. Yeah, the second one looks a lot bigger than the first one. A lot bigger. Sometimes you get that. You never know. Sometimes they're the same size. Look at that. I don't know very many human mothers who are up on their feet and eating their breakfast no, right after no. birth. You know what's amazing, Debbie, is to watch that, that, that's that animal's first nursing. And how did it find, how did it know where to go? They basically know where it is by instinct. They have a really strong instinct to suckle and find food very quickly. They're hungry. Being born is very hard work. Now don't start nursing me. Hey, hold it, hold it. Hey. Ever hear of the expression of face only a mother could love? Well, fortunately, there are a lot of beings in this world, both human and animal, that are willing and able to step in for the natural mother 
when a baby needs extra help. At zoos, aquariums, and other facilities, we often find these little guys in nurseries. There are a number of surrogate mothers to be found that get a special fulfillment from this relationship. One of the most respected and dedicated mothers I have ever met is Pat Sass, senior keeper of the Great Ape House. Pat, I have not done this bottle fed in a long time with three girls, but they're all grown, but I haven't lost touch, have I? No, as long as she's taking it, so far you're doing okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I have lost touch with. That's what you're doing. Yeah, you got the better no, job. No, don't ask me to do that. <laughs> Woo! That's I never got to change little boy's better. diaper, and I'm not gonna start now. Now, what's your name? That's Zuwadi. Zuwadi. Boy, you're a good-looking gorilla. What happened to Zawadi's mother? Well, Zawadi's mother is okay, but he developed a medical problem, so he needed to be uh, hand-raised. Now, who do I have here? That's Tabibu. And how old is she? A couple months old. And look at the feet on this one. Look at the feet. It, I've never seen Marbles. pigmentation like uh -huh. that. It looks like a marble. Uh, her father is Gino, and all of the babies that he has fathered have either had marbled feet or white. Can you hold Zawadi up a minute, sir? So far, I've been, Are you seeing, ready? I've been seeing his bottom here the whole time. <laughs> I can't seem to see what he, how, how handsome he is. Good looking guy, Cha. You good looking. Boy, he is handsome. This boy's gonna be big. I can tell from those hands. <laughs> Look at the size of those hands. This male is gonna be big. He is gonna Are ya? What's he doing? He's just, just playing? playing. Sure, he's just all excited, aren't you? Are you excited <laughs> and you his, like to be tickled? Open, so he's having fun, just like kids do, <laughs> with a big belly like a Buddha belly, a Buddha belly. Yeah, that's what you got. It's like a little Mack truck. <laughs> How long will he stay in the nursery? Because it looks to me like he's going to take this place apart in about two more weeks. No, he's okay. Actually, when they're about um, close to a year, they get moved back to the ape house. And then we have a program where we have a female, Debbie, who's about 27. And she's never had her own babies, but she's an excellent foster mother. And we will slowly introduce him to her, let them bond, and then she will teach him to be a gorilla. Right now, he's between a gorilla and a people because of being mother raised and hand raised. Now, what, what do you think is easier, taking care of human babies or gorilla babies? Well, it's like having a kid so that um, your life isn't your own. It belongs to the gorilla. And again, if you have to um, go out or do anything, either it has to be where you can take the baby with you or uh, you have to get a babysitter. Though, I admit, it's a lot easier to get a babysitter for a great ape than it is for a human. Yeah, I really enjoy working with the animals and especially with the great apes. Um, I don't know, I just feel that, uh, I don't know, maybe in my other life I was a gorilla. I don't know. So, and I like their personalities and their toughness. They're probably one of the neatest animals around. I want to see the baby too. Okay, okay. How many babies you got there? One, two, three, four. You're at the wrong end. No, the wrong end. Keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on going. There you go. It's always fun to get to know baby animals. Here in Nepal, they're everywhere, and they live right with the people. A pretty goat. Isn't that cute? But sometimes there's a serious purpose in looking for young animals, especially when they're endangered. In Nepal's Royal Chitwan National Park, attempts to save their native rhino have been very successful. Part of the effort includes capturing a small number of these animals so that they can breed in zoos around the world. This way, even if the population in Chitwan is wiped out through poaching or disease, wow. there will still be greater one-horned Asian rhinos free to breed so that we do not lose this animal forever. Good luck, A calf like this one is still wild and strong enough to seriously injure a person. The people who work patiently to earn their trust are a special breed themselves. Gene Jacobson is the keeper of large mammals at the Fort Worth Zoo. 
When I caught up with her in Nepal, it was a long way from Texas. I've already seen a rhino. You seen a rhino yet? I've seen one. Oh, I've seen man. one from elephant back. So what, what are you doing here? Actually, um, I came here just a few days ago to do some, uh, some of my own research. Is this an experience of a lifetime for you? Oh, it certainly is. I've never seen rhinos in the wild. I've only taken care of rhinos in zoos, but to come here and see rhinos in their natural habitat um, is just oh, incredible. It's the same thing for me. Yeah. Have you seen yeah. your baby rhinos yet in Texas? No, I no. haven't seen them. And I have something to give to you. What's that? I brought some photographs All right. of oh, our yeah, rhinos. And Bisno, mm -hmm. yeah. you were responsible for, for capturing these rhinos. Oh, yes. Yeah. This is a wow. rune. This is our male yeah. rhino. And this is a rati, our female rhino. Oh, that's nice. Night. What's this right here? Oh, this one's bed for, you know, watching for at night. The keepers sleep here. The keepers sleep here at night. Is that what you do at your zoo? <laughs> I have. I have. I know yeah. the, I know this woman would. She is good. Yeah. Poor people can sleep here. This is something else. Just sleep right here. Yes. Wow. We because oh, look danger at this for babies. That's why wow. some animal is coming, you know. How old's the little baby? This one's about uh, five to six months old. Now, how do you feed them? Uh, we can feed now. Uh, we put on the big bucket and milk. <laughs> we mix vitamins with milk. And then he's putting in just a bucket with the down there. Oh. And he can feed them like that. She knows it's food. Yeah, she knows now. Oh, look so at she's that. Going oh. To... oh, no, no, no. <laughs> It's your milk. It's your milk. How long do they nurse in the wild with the mother? Uh, about one year. One year. They only stay with mother like uh, like four years. Till another baby Until, is born. Yeah, another baby is born. So he's touching the rhino. Yes. But he's touching her, and eventually he'll be able to, to go in with her. Yeah, that, yeah, that's why they are touching. And it takes a lot of patience mm -hmm. with them. Yeah. them yes. You can't go too quick. Yeah. yeah. Now, mm -hmm. will this one's mother go out and breed again? Will breed yes. again? Yes, yes. How, how long will she stay in here? About, uh, like, uh, one week. Another week. She's been here one week. Yeah, she's been uh, one week. And she'll be here one and more week. she'll be uh, another one week. She's going to charge. Whoa. She doesn't quite trust him. Yeah. No, not yet. But not day yet. after day, doing this two or three times a day, yeah, that's she right. learns yeah. not, to be, yeah, not to be afraid. Yeah. They can eat. Has it eaten from anybody's hand yet? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. It's very dangerous just to try like that. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Still, she's going to charge. Whoa. Cool. Maybe he sticks the orange on the end of the stick. Tio, on the end of the stick. Tio, let him out of the Let him out of the way. You like that, boy? You like it, Look, 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 look. She has to smell it. See? See? She smelled it. Ah. She's going to eat it. See? She's, she's going to Fishing for yeah. rhinos. Pretty good idea, huh? Yeah. From now on, you can say Jack taught yeah, us this. Jack taught This is what they do, though, in the circus. It, when they train the cats, they right. put the meat on the stick, see? And then they, they follow the stick. Right. They remember this every day, right? Yeah. Every day they do this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, he Take likes it now. Them. Look here. Look at yeah. his. Yes. He's petting him. Eventually, she'll she'll beg to be petted. She'll they be, like that? They love it. They love contact. Ah. Let's get in up in the record books. Right. Oh, look. Oh, it's going to eat out of his hand. Oh, wow. Hopefully. Oh, neat. Wonderful. Oh, good. <laughs> Another step. Yeah. The birth of any animal is probably the single most rewarding side to being a zoo director. But breeding programs to save endangered animals won't do us any good if 
we don't raise healthy babies. Although we always hope that the natural mother will take care of her baby, sometimes she can't. Thank goodness today we have beautiful nurseries in our zoos with very sophisticated equipment. And thanks to that, animals like this little owl monkey here have survived, as well as a lot of other endangered animals. So next time you visit your local zoo, be sure to go by the nursery and say hello. We'll see you next time.